today's video, I'm gonna be teaching you guys the basics of Blender. So let's just get straight into it. All right, so now we are in Blender. I'm using version 3.6.1. I would recommend using the latest version of Blender. And as you can see, there's a lot going on. We have a bunch of tabs up here. We have the layout tab, modeling, sculpting, UV editing, texture paint, shading, animation, rendering, compositing, geometry nodes, and scripting. So if this is your first time opening Blender, you might be kind of overwhelmed with all the different tabs and windows, but if you break it down like we are in this video, it's really simple. And to kind of pan around, if you look at the bottom right corner, you'll see the buttons I'm pressing. If you hold shift and then the middle mouse button, you can pan around. If you just hold the middle mouse button, you can orbit. And to zoom, I just usually use the scroll key or you can hold control and press down on the middle mouse button and it's like a much smoother zoom. So in this tutorial, I can't cover every single thing about Blender, but we are gonna be covering like the basics, basics, like not talking baldies, basics. Okay. So we are just gonna make some random render and to hopefully give you guys a better idea of how to use Blender. So let's take a quick look at this tab right here. So this is the render settings. So we have the render engine. I usually always use cycles. There is a difference. Um, I'm not too familiar with Workbench. And if you don't have like the greatest computer in the world, I'd recommend using Eevee, but there are some limitations that we're gonna cover later on. This is the sampling tab and this is the number of samples being rendered. And as you can see, if we switch to cycles, we have a different set of settings. So now we can get more specific into like what we want to adjust. We have more control over our samples. And I'm not going to be going over every single one of these because that will take forever. And also some of these you don't even really need to worry about. And then we're going to go over to output. This is pretty much what your final output is going to look like. So we got 1920 by 1080. You can set the frame start and the frame end. This is where you can select what where you want your render to go to. And then if we go down here to this world tab, this is where you can change like your environment lighting or texture. I use this a lot for putting in a HDRI. And then this is our object properties tab. So this is our object properties tab. Tab. And basically, if you select like this cube right here, you can like alter it, do pretty much whatever you want. Then we got the modifiers. This is where you can make like simulations. We have the physics properties. We have the constraints. And then this is our materials tab. So right now we're just gonna make a very simple render. So what I'm actually gonna do, I'm gonna select my cube. I'm gonna hit G and then Control and then Z. And then I'm gonna just bring that up. And now as you can see, it aligns with the red line right here and it just makes things a lot simpler and so now all we need to do is just hit shift a that's how you can add all these different meshes or whatever you see in this tab as you can see this is the different meshes we can add we can even add a monkey head i don't really know why blender added this um right click and hit shade smooth and as you can tell it's a lot smoother now but right now i'm just going to add a little floor and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to hit tab and as you can see on the top left it says edit mode if we hit tab again it switches from object mode to edit mode and then if you look up here these are the different like points we can adjust so this one is the, the vertex so we can adjust these corners if we hit two on the keyboard we can adjust the edges and then if we hit three, we can adjust the faces. But we are gonna select two, select this edge, and then we're gonna hit E to extrude. And then Z, so it goes straight up. Now I'm gonna select this edge again, and then I'm gonna hit Control B, and then I'm gonna use the scroll wheel. What? I'm gonna use the scroll wheel, and then as you can see, it makes like this little ramp. And then this is just gonna be like a background, like, like a backdrop pretty much. And we're gonna hit shade smooth so we don't get those little seams right there. And then I'm actually gonna delete this cube and why not use the monkey head? Oh, and by the way, to move the object, you hit G. To rotate, you hit R. And then to scale, you hit S. If you look up there on the top right, you use those um, access points as like reference to how you want to modify your mesh so like if i hit s and then press x it's gonna scale on the x axis if i hit z on the z axis y you know so on and so forth so right now i'm gonna hit one on the keyboard and then i'm gonna kind of align this to the ground and then i'm gonna hit three to see the side profile and then i'm just gonna align it to my liking just so it rests on the floor 
And then we're gonna start setting up our composition. So what I like to do is I'm gonna go over here and make a separate screen. And then on this screen, I'm gonna hit zero on my keyboard. And then I'm gonna press N. And then right here in the view tab, I'm gonna select camera to view. And then now we can move around the camera. But keep in mind, if you wanna move out of the camera, make sure you uncheck this or else you move the camera and like mess up your camera positioning. That's why I like to have a separate tab for it so I don't have to worry about moving my camera. So we're gonna go over here and hit shade smooth. So I'm actually gonna switch this back to Eevee for this example. But if you are using cycles, I highly suggest use GPU compute because it'll make things run a lot smoother. So right now our monkey looks kind of weird. Like it just looks very, it, it just doesn't look good. So to kind of smooth out the edges, what we're gonna do is in the modification tab, we're gonna select the add modifier and then go over to subdivision surface. And as you can see, it already makes a big difference. You can increase this. I usually keep the render a little bit higher than uh, the viewport, but I wouldn't go too crazy on the subdivision modifier because it will increase the render time. Depending on how crazy you go, it will crash your PC. What you can do is, if you like the look of it, what you can do is just go over here and hit apply. And I'm not gonna lie, this is, I'm just gonna adjust this. This looks crazy. All right, so now that we got everything in place, I'm gonna select this, and then I'm gonna go to this lighting tab right here. And then now you have four different options of lighting you can use. For this example, I'm gonna be using the spotlight. So as you can see up here, we have different like rendering views. I'm gonna go over to this one and this one's like what it's actually gonna look like when it's rendered. And so now I'm just gonna kind of move the lighting to where I want it. Now I'm kind of using this tab as reference. Also another tip, if you just want to see whatever's being shown in the camera, make sure the camera is selected, go down to the camera tab and then under viewport display, and then you can increase or decrease this to pretty much only see what the camera is seeing. And so back in the lighting settings, we can adjust the intensity, can even adjust the color. And so now we're gonna start getting into shading. So I'm gonna select the background and I'm gonna make another screen. The reason why I do this is just cause I feel like it makes things a lot easier and I don't have to like go over here, these different tabs and I just have everything on one screen. And so right here, we are gonna select the shader editor, click N and then we're gonna click new. And so now this is where we can really adjust the settings. We can change the color. But this is where you'll really see the big difference between EV and Cycles. See, as you can tell, me adjusting these settings, like nothing's really changing that much. However, if we switch over to Cycles, there's a big difference. So now we can really start playing around with the roughness. And then on the monkey head, I'm gonna make this like a gold metallic look. Yeah, something like that. And then I'm just gonna kind of mesh around with the lighting. I'm gonna go over here and hit environment texture and just select a random HDRI. And so now you can see it's now using um, the HDRI lighting as another light source and you can go ahead and adjust that on the strength tab. And so as you can see, there's quite a bit of noise right here. So what you can do, another good thing about cycles is that you can add a denoiser and you can just see that noise just goes away. All right, and then once you're happy with your render, you can go ahead and hit F12, and then now you can just wait for your render to finish. All right, so now once your render is finished, what you can do is go ahead and hit image, and then save as and save it to wherever you want. So those are just the very basics of Blender. There's obviously a whole lot more to Blender. And if you guys want me to really get into that and get to more advanced stuff, like go over texturing, physics, simulations, modeling, just really anything, let me know in the comments. And also give me some more suggestions on what tutorials you guys want. But yeah, that's gonna do it for today's video. I appreciate every single one of you guys and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.